There are a lot of officers when they are critically injured and they can't come back to this job. Um, there's, there's that survivor's guilt and then you pile onto that the fact that you don't have the benefits and your family doesn't have those, those benefits. And a lot of people don't realize that it's different from state to state. You know, the benefits that you get in the state of New York are different than what we get in Florida and what the minimum standards are. I do not know you, but I am your brother. You do not know me, but I am your protector. I will run into a burning building to save your life. Though I do not know your name, I will take a bullet for you. Though we've never met, I, I believe, believe in duty, duty and sacrifice, sacrifice of self. self. Your, your family, family is my family. Is my family. Your life is my duty. What's going on guys? Time for another episode of Behind the Uniforms. We are here on location in beautiful Florida. We are here for Heroes Weekend and it is put on by the Wounded Officers Initiative. Can you tell them all who you are? My name is Maria Ayanuzi and I am the Director of uh, Public Relations for the Wounded Officers Initiative. So I'm super excited to be bringing you guys these stories. The crew over at Law Enforcement Today and Enforce sent us down here so we can sort of capture some of these moments. And I think the best way of really capturing it today is tell everybody what Wounded Officer Initiative is and why you guys started it. We started the organization a few years ago um, because we recognized there was a need for police officers that are catastrophically injured in the line of duty. Um, there was really nothing uh, for them after they left law enforcement, whether it was education or um, just something a little bit more than a GoFundMe account that you know is going to run out fairly quickly. Sure. You know, one of the things that so many of these officers who have been wounded in the line of duty have shared. Um, and this is something that you won't hear in the media because it's not a positive thing, is time and time again I hear, I wish I had been killed because their families would have gotten the insurance money and they wouldn't have gone through this recovery. And what's been so beautiful about experiencing this weekend is that you guys have given so many of these officers hope and you've, you've really sort of taken that narrative that's out there about policing and are working to change that. How has this blown up and, and changed and grown over the years? I, I think at the pace we're going, we're almost doubling every year. It's, it's grown so fast in such a short amount of time. Um, and it is important. And you're absolutely right that there are a lot of officers when they are critically injured and they can't come back to this job. Um, there's, there's that survivor's guilt and then you pile onto that the fact that you don't have the benefits and your family doesn't have those those benefits and a lot of people don't realize that it's different from state to state you know the benefits that you get in the state of New York are different than what we get in Florida and what the minimum standards are I think the public in general has this assumption that um, sort of like in the military if we were to get injured and we couldn't come back to work that we're going to be taken care of and that's just right. not the case there is no fund that's paying paying out officers or anything like that like I said every state has a, a minimum of what the pension is that you can get. For example, in Florida with 42%, that's very low. There are agencies in Florida that choose to, to give you a higher percentage if you are medically retired, um, but they don't have to. Sure. And so that changes. And, and so what we're trying to do is establish uh, the bar, set the bar nationwide to say the minimum should be this, you know, or, you know, the minimum benefits across the board should be you know, whatever that, that may be, whether it's education, you know, money, retirement, pension. Now, I would say even outside of all of that tremendous work that you guys are doing in this community, one of the things that I've really noticed over the last couple of days is that you created a family and you have given them more than just hope, you've given them each other. And that's so rare these days to, to really find your tribe and, and to bring these people together who are able to sort of understand what, what each other is going through. How's it been to sort of see that blossom over the last few years? Oh, it's remarkable. It's been it's been everything that we could have hoped for and more. Um, and you're right, and that's exactly what it is. A lot of officers feel very alone, and that not a lot of other officers understand what they're going through. So to be able to have Heroes Weekend and to bring everyone together and to have them meet each other, you know, an officer from New Mexico and an officer from, you know, New Jersey are, are speaking and they, and they understand that, hey, I'm not alone. And even though you may be across the country, you're experiencing the same things that we are. And it's, it's just beautiful and it is, it is a family. It's a, it's a growing family. 
tell me a little bit about what we can expect tonight. I'm not going to tell anybody, and this is going to air after. So what can okay. people expect? Um, tonight is really about honoring the heroes. Um, that is the primary focus. We're going to be out there. Um, we have six new heroes that we are uh, introducing tonight. And then we also have our wounded that come from years past. And it's going to be a beautiful ceremony. They're going to be um, presenting some awards to the new heroes. Um, but you can't tell them I told you that. I won't say and, um, and it should be it should be just a beautiful night to honor their sacrifice, um, as well as the sacrifices that their families are, have made. After tonight, well, after tomorrow, uh, people go home and, and they leave this family, at least here, but you guys offer a sort of a continuing program to keep them together, if I'm not mistaken, right? We try to meet throughout the year, not just for Heroes Weekend. Um, they have their own, you know, social media, private pages that everybody um, is on that is a wounded uh, hero that has been to Heroes Weekend. And we really do go above and beyond to try to make sure that everybody keeps in touch. And um, if we can't see them throughout the year, you know, there's always Heroes Weekend and they're so excited to come back and, and see everybody. Shameless plug because you guys do some tremendous work. and. None of you take home a check from this. No, You're doing this because it's the right thing to do. Um, how can people help? We have uh, a website, the uh, woundedofficers.org. Wounded officer, I'm sorry, woundedofficersinitiative.org. Um, please go to the website. It tells you um, you can donate through that. We have different events, uh, primarily in the state of Florida, but we do go outside uh, the state of Florida. But we do have uh, fundraising events that are always happening. Uh, but please go to the website, um, check it out, and also see the stories of all our wounded officers. Awesome. And guys, over the coming weeks, you're going to see many of our episodes are focused on the work being done here this weekend. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Thanks for hitting that share button. Even if you don't have the funds to donate right now, maybe some of your friends will. So hit that share button. It'll take you two seconds. Thank you so much for all thank that you. you're doing. Guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you. God bless America.